Previously on Is This Thing On? With just one more classroom session till performance, Glenn encouraged the students to focus on their all important opening and closing. What? I thought we had that discussion. What discussion was that? The feud between Stacey and Kim continued to escalate. What do you mean? Brad finally snapped and stormed out of Imperial Hotel. Do you want me to follow him? And guest comedian Joe White focused on preparation and took the students on an excursion to help them confront their fear. I'm shitting myself right now. It's now the morning of the performance and the students have assembled at Melbourne's Town Hall to meet their final instructor, legend of the international comedy circuit, Greg Fleet. Welcome to my home. Now, you might be wondering why I've called you here. This is the epicenter of the comedy festival. I'm going to take you in here and show you the main room. So, you ready? Yeah. 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 Let's go have a look. Greg Fleet, better known simply as Fleety, is one of Australia's most highly respected stand-up comedians. Look at you. He's performed at every Adelaide Fringe since 1988, graced the stage 29 times at Melbourne International Comedy Festival and seven times at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. He co-hosted the number one rating breakfast show in 2002 on Sydney Two Day FM with Wendy Harmer and toured the world with his five star reviewed one man shows, Tie Dye and 10 Years in a Long Sleeve Shirt. Enter. Have a wander around. There's usually more people in the audience. This is where uh, a lot of the big international shows happen and a lot of the big local shows. I've worked in this room quite a few times. Give me some light. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Performing in this room is quite remarkable. You're all starting out. You're starting out tonight. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be nerve wracking. The audience isn't there to hate you. The audience is there because they want to have a good time. And if you're having a good time, they'll have a good time. If you're enjoying yourself, the audience will enjoy themselves. That's the basic bottom line of comedy. If you're freaking out, it'll make them uncomfortable. But uh, this is where you can end up. You know, you could end up here working to 1,500 people, working to television, working to millions of people around the country. You know, you may never get the opportunity to work here, uh, except for today. Yeah, today, each of you is going to get up on this stage and just do a couple of minutes of what you're going to do tonight. This may be the last time you ever work on this stage. It could be the first time of hundreds of times you'll get to work on this stage. Who's going to go first? I'm bleeding to death. My, my face is in my hands. I could die. What could be so important that we have to stop at your house? Oh, I'm sorry, honey, but I need a change of underwear. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> To actually get to stand on the stage and perform, even if it was only for a few minutes and for a few people, it was something that uh, I will take to my grave. I like the idea of picking up your face. That's really nice. And trying to work out which bit is which. Now that's Glyn Nicholas's idea, but it seems to work well. It works very well. I'm feeling cautiously optimistic. I know my material, but the only issue really is Will the customers find it funny? So imagine this, a scene in Underbelly. Nighttime, dark alley. Jesus is tiptoeing up behind a Pharisee. Taps him on the shoulder, he turns around, Jesus Christ! Jesus just lifts his gun and says, prepare to meet my dad. Boom! Great fleet said this is like the MCG of comedy, and he is bang on. I just love being here. It's gonna be hard to get me out of here, actually. You actually studied to be a, a priest? Yep. For I, The line is, once you know how the sausage is made, you lose your appetite for sausage. <laughs> well, some do. That sounds like the Catholic Church. Yes. And then I realised that uh, I don't believe in God. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that old thing, yeah. I just love it. <laughs> Money can't buy this. Yeah. I also like the fact that he shot the guy who was on the ground two more times <laughs> for no reason. And if the crowd's really going, I'm going to empty the chamber, yeah. throw it away and pull out another one. <laughs> <laughs> Joe White, his advice, prepare, 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 and then on the day, chill, that's what I'm doing. I can't wait to have the audience there as that other partner. Are you ready? I think I am. I hope I am. No, I think I am. I am. <laughs> am I? <laughs> Is this thing on? <laughs> So I started dating, and it's all very confusing. Take emojis. I thought there were just smiley faces, but there's all these emojis that have sexual connotations. I'm gonna make it a goal that I will be on stage here one day. Anyway, I invited this guy around for dinner. When he confirmed, he gave a big thumbs up 
and then included pictures of zucchinis, eggplants, a couple of tomatoes. He was very disappointed when he came round and saw that I had misconstrued his sexting. It's not just about the audience taking it in, you've got to actually make them laugh. And some of my stuff didn't get a laugh. I'm like, why is that? Okay, maybe I didn't do the setup right. Or actually the funniest word's supposed to be at the end. Or actually there's a different word for that. You obviously you were nervous and you're gonna be, you know, you are gonna be nervous, but just try and be as relaxed as you can be. And sometimes that can come from standing and just not moving. I guess the main thing for me is making sure I remember my material, because if I'm too in my head trying to remember stuff, it's it's I'm not gonna be able to be performing at my best. On the other side of the enclosure, there was kids watching and they were just screaming their heads off. So we had to quickly run down and calm them down. It's gonna be okay, you know? It's, it's, it's not real, it's just a toy fucking bottom. It's not gonna be okay. Let's just get out of here. We'll go to Subway, we'll get some lunch. <laughs> where the cheese is tasty. I'm very like, nervous and, and a, bit, a bit stressed about it. Hopefully it goes okay. As it gets closer and closer, it's gonna be even more um, stressful. I really wanted to know how the possum handled it. Just keep your eyes up, just look at the audience. You can either look over them or at them, but don't look down. When you got into the more animated stuff where you were going, it's fucked, I can't, be, I can't fucking stand it, you, you got more confident with that. With comedy, you have to, you have to feel it, and, and that, you know, I just felt it, man. I've, I've been rehearsing and, and I've, uh, a lot, and I think uh, it will go okay. Mum was getting tired of me stealing all her food and draining her life. She wanted me to move out. She just kept on pushing me and pushing me and pushing me. She was just even screaming at my dad at one point. And then after all that, I couldn't stand the pressure anymore. So then I just cut the cord and here I am. So where are you from? <laughs> like when I walk through the door initially, like, you know, just kind of having a look around and, you know, kind of seeing the history, but how it's like the comedy epicenter, I'm like, was tingling a little bit as I was kind of looking around. I, mean, I didn't get the Bruce Lee thing. Well, yeah, I, I, I could, it's not really a, a great gag, but that was just something I threw in there. Because of the way you said it, I went, oh, it must be really funny. I just, I haven't, I just don't get it. Yeah. So just so, keep doing it. People will just, everyone will assume it's hilarious. <laughs> comedy is my dream and being able to do it with all these people, with all these, you know, great coaches and legends, uh, like, it's more than I could ever ask for. We also had a business management course and it was operational functional structure for Optimum Wealth, which basically means get investors. And the best investors to get are Centrelink or the Salvos because they'll give you startup funds, but as long as you don't lodge a tax receipt, you should be able to get away with not having to do a return profit. So I scheduled in a meltdown at six o'clock last night, but we were running late home, so I pushed it back to about seven. <laughs> Great. Just believe in it. You, you seem to, so good. I lived it. <laughs> good, well, there you go. This is just a biopic. <laughs> it's not a comedy session, it's cheap therapy. <laughs> I actually thought right. that I would not come up with five minutes, that I would have been in the fetal position by now and quit, but I have made it to the last day. So it's just gonna get me past eight o'clock and then it's all, it's all good from there. So the next thing you know, I actually tap my wife on the shoulder and she looks up to me and she's, Jesus Christ, what's that? I said, you wouldn't believe what's happening. I've just given myself a facial. I said, I now know why women don't like facials. It really does taste like salty fish custard. Oh, Jesus. Honestly, I thought it was bloody spectacular. I was in awe of actually the size of the room. You know, I felt pretty comfortable up there. You don't get many opportunities to actually do things like this, and you know, it was just great. I really enjoyed it. I was thinking you were going to talk about open heart surgery, and he pretty much just talked about wanking, which is full on. You know, it's 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 not what I would do, but it may well work. And have you really had open heart surgery? Yes, I have. In future, I mean, obviously not tonight. Talk more about it, because you know people are fascinated by things. Like yeah, look, I found what Greg was saying it was good because pretty much my whole actually performance tonight is actually about my heart experience and the things I went through. Unfortunately, he didn't have an opportunity to sort of see the middle bit, which actually talks about um, being in hospital a lot more. Uh, that was a bit of a confidence boost that I've actually have, have gone down the right path. <laughs> So he pulls over and I'm right behind him and he gets out of his car, six foot three, chiseled jaw, amazing suit and I'm much right up to him and I look at him in his piercing blue eyes and I'm writing my detail and I say, hey mate, you take my number and you call me. <laughs> I'm leaving this with, you know, the most incredible week, the most amazing memories, the most amazing connections and people and advice. And no matter what happens, I can't walk away from this with 
a sour tone because if I fail, it's just going to make me hungrier to do better. And if I do better, I'll only get better. I didn't actually see that, you know, see that coming with the guy, which is good. So, yeah, nice work. Well done. I would have liked to have been given a little bit more constructive criticism. I mean, it's the last few hours before its final display of, of our week. I would have liked something a bit more. But at the same time, like, I've had the most unbelievable week. I'm having so much fun. I can't wait. <laughs> Some people say getting a divorce can be quite painful, but honestly, for me, it was like taking it up the arse. I'd have to say it was probably a little bit uh, more painful for my ex-husband. He took it like a man and he copped it on the chin. <laughs> it resonated so much with me because I got up on that stage and just had like this massive rush of, I want to be here. This is what I want. This is what I'm working for. Right. And I take it there's more bogan stuff that goes before that. Yeah, that's yeah. the ending bit. Yeah, yeah. There's a yeah. front bit of inbred alcoholic cousin no. sleeping. No. Yeah. No, I did not get drunk last night. I couldn't drive, but I wasn't drunk. No, I didn't. I didn't get drunk. I, it was just a late night. Fine, I did Hunger. get drunk. Did you get drunk or I not? I did, yes, I did. Is that a good thing to do? No, most definitely not. I don't think it's going to affect my performance tonight. So that's your uh, first go at the, uh, the Melbourne Town Hall. Hopefully it won't be your last. It's probably also good to have been up on this stage because tonight at the gig, there'll be obviously more people there, but it's going to seem a smaller, easier thing to do in a way than, than being up here and looking out at 1,500 seats. So well done to all of you and uh, I'll see you tonight. Thank you. Greg's choice to bring the students to this iconic comedy coliseum had been a masterstroke. The events of the last six days culminating at this venue had brought the reality of performing to a live audience into sharp, inescapable focus. But something was missing. Well, not something, someone. Do you want me to follow him? Yeah. Yesterday, Brad had stormed out of class after a confrontation with the show's director. And now, with only a few hours before the performance, he'd once again gone AWOL. He said he was leaving the show. He's got a, a number of issues that he's dealing with and he wants to deal with and um, he feels that he can't come back. I think he's worried about how he'll be perceived. I contacted him and I said, look, what's, what's the deal? What's going on? Are you coming back? And uh, he'd had a couple of drinks and he said, look, um, I want to, I really, this means a lot to me. And um, he said, OK, I'm coming. So I believe he's on his way down now. Let's hope that's true. But either way, he would need to get a wriggle on. The venue for the performance was the Golden Gate Hotel in the heart of South Melbourne. And as the sun set over the city, the 300-seat comedy room was filling fast. I had a little bit of a power nap upstairs before. I think the whole pressure of the week, having 10 big personalities in one room, it's exhausted me a lot. But I'm quite confident they learned a lot and I'm very much looking forward forward to it. So my naked butt helped and my um, sans uh, Australian size the dick helped as well. I don't know. <laughs> They're either acting cool or they actually are cool. I think the vibe is just everyone's over preparing which is good. I know when I started out one of the most important things was other comics who were in a similar situation to me in that, you know, they hadn't been doing it very long. It always made it a lot easier. When, when you called away to do a gig somewhere and you were the only comic there and you'd only been doing comedy for a couple of months, I always found that really hard. No one wants to be the first lamb to the slaughter. Yeah. Right? And, uh, I don't know if they know that going first is not as good, but uh, maybe they do because they were asking me off the lineup and I was like, why do you care? I was like, I don't want to go first. Yeah. <laughs> it was always tough, you know, being, being new because you were always the, the first one on. But if you had a good MC, that made all the difference in the world, you know. I think they're, they're all prepared quite well, so they're all very confident in my eyes. Um, however, I think my favourite would have to be Grant. And then all the, the funny stuff that comes out of his mouth. And I, I encourage him to channel that on stage, you know, mm -hmm. just be free and just have fun. If something comes to mind and he thinks it's funny, go with it. I've got my wife here. And I have forewarned her that uh, she is actually the centre of a lot of my jokes and um, not to stand up at any point because they will recognise her. <laughs> the people that I saw today who it wasn't even so much about the material as the confidence level. Some people whose material was actually better than other people didn't have the confidence and they were very, you know, very quiet and a bit mousy and they might struggle more than someone whose material's not as good but they're, but they're more confident. It's almost like a trick, you know, you can convince people that you're fantastic just by being confident. Confidence, that word again. 
We'd been hearing it all week. Every instructor had referred to it in one way or another. And now Greg was saying it didn't even have to be real. If you didn't feel confident, just fake it. Yeah, look, with half an hour before uh, showtime, I'm still a little bit concerned um, about Judy. She said before she's feeling confident, but I'm not getting a lot of positive vibe. It'll be interesting to see what it's like when people are clapping and she's walking up to stage, because that will be the defining moment for Judy, I think. One of them's over in a corner, she's got her earbuds in. As much as she's rehearsing the lines, it also stops you from having to think about what the gig's going to be like. My other pet project has been Steve Mackey. He's been really down and then he's up and down and I hypnotised him the other day and he come out like a surge. It was like he was on methamphetamine. So we spoke before and he was a little bit down again. I worked with him. We did another session, a very quick session. He lacks a bit of self-doubt, but I think that'll be the surge to get him up there and time will tell. It's to see the people roll in and uh, getting a little bit anxious, like going over my material, making sure I've got that all down. Tara just came up to me and then just insulted me as soon as she saw me. I said he looked like a train driving pirate. Which is clearly, you know, ha how she's dealing with shitting herself. Because it's my defence mechanism when I'm nervous is to just pick on people. Cara, yeah, I expect to go quite well. Because, look, my favourite smart asses anyway. Nausea, panic and a sense of I want to get this over and done with. Plus, you know, in another life she's a nurse and they got the best sense of humour. This is my first time ever performing stand-up comedy, not in the shower. Well, it's crunch time. Brad's finally arrived and he's uh, specified a couple stipulations. He doesn't want to be filmed. Wait, what? Not being filmed? He does realise this is a television program, not a podcast. The producers spoke to Brad and eventually he agreed to talk on camera. Look, it's very confrontational to have your whole life exposed on camera. Uh, very confrontational. Especially after you've been through a lot of bullshit like, you know, like I have with the, uh, an engagement ending <laughs> three weeks ago. <laughs> I, laugh, I laugh every time I, th I say that. And this afternoon, it was just, it just, I just melted down and I couldn't go to the uh, event. And I went to a pub and I had quite a few beers. And um, no, I got my shit together and, and I'm here. And I'm glad to be here. I'm glad he's here. I'm glad he's finally doing something about it. it takes a lot of courage to do what he's done. Yeah, and I think also having a bit of a meltdown this afternoon, I think, you know, it just, I, I cleared my head. And I feel better now. Hopefully he can get up there and just deliver and get it out of the way and move on. Surprisingly, even though I know I'm going to forget lines and I know I'm going to stumble, somehow I feel like a load's been lifted and uh, you know, I think I'll be all right. Brad was back, albeit with a belly full of beers. And just in time, the venue was packed, the comedians were backstage, it was showtime. And the perfect person to MC the night was the man who knew the students better than anyone. Lead instructor, mentor and acclaimed comedian, Glenn Nicholas. I came back to Australia when it was still the 10 pound pong. So I said to my mum, I said, Mum, Dad, I'm, I'm going to go live in Australia. <laughs> and, and all I have to do is save up 10 pounds. The Australian government, they'll pay for the rest of it. And she says, really, if I loan you 10 pounds, will you take your brother? <laughs> Backstage, Fleety was delivering a last-minute pep talk to 10 very nervous and very excited students. Talk to the audience like you're telling the story to a friend of yours because uh, they're not here to see you suffer and die. They want you to go well, I want you to go well, and you want to go well, so go well. One last it's a big evening for all of the alumni. Lynn had done a masterful job in warming up the audience and setting the scene for the students' inaugural comedy performance. The moment had arrived. It was time to bring up the first lamb to the slaughter. Please welcome to the stage, Steve Davey! Thank you very much. Just before we start, do you mind if I just get some stereotypes out the way? Because whenever I'm on stage, first thing people say is, fitness trainer. <laughs> Sorry, Trey, he needs a fitness trainer. True story. Back in my religious days, I did start training to be an Anglican priest. Uh, <laughs> and uh, in particular, I wanted to do prison chaplaincy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, quickly changed my material. I know, um, but the, uh, the head priest who was training us, who ironically is in prison, um, <laughs> 
Steve was a natural, reading the audience, improvising and maintaining his easygoing composure. Backstage, Glenn was giving the rest of the students his take on the audience and reminding them to breathe. And so finally, in casting, I really think this is the role that could help Craig McLaughlin resurrect his career. <laughs> Next up, Judy Stoltz. And I met this man and he was handsome and he was funny and he was a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> the reason that he was a dickhead was that he was a bit of a daredevil. So anyway, one day he said to me, how about we learn how to skydive together? And I thought, I hate heights. I don't get in a plane. I don't wear high heels, <laughs> but he's cute. Despite Steve and Apron's concerns, Judy was smashing it. Backstage, Steve Mackey was a nervous wreck. Yeah, I'm just going to get... That's sort of the sound I made. I sort of went... Whoa! Just going to enjoy it. the chemistry the other day and I was lining up and I gave the pharmacist my prescription. She says to me, she says, would you like the cheap brand, would you like the expensive brand? So I said, well, I said, oh, the cheap brand, but I just want you to know, like, financially I'm doing okay, you know? <laughs> Phew, his first laugh, a good start. But then... It's, uh, it's, it's, um... Yeah. <laughs> A five-second brain fade that must have felt like a lifetime. The old Steve so, Mackey might have capitulated the right there, but this new improved version gathered his composure, refound his words, and never looked back. Has anyone ever seen a ring tank fuck a possum? <laughs> Rules of threes and all my memory joggers, keywords, you know, uh, getting the pace right. So, yeah, I feel really good. Thank you. Martin! So, I'm thinking about setting up a new business for women like me who are trying to get back into the dating scene. It's called Jim's Escorts. <laughs> You're floating the first act, so. And clear the cobwebs. Breathe. Smile. Tits and teeth. So now I'm ready to meet someone, but this time I don't plan to do their cooking, cleaning and washing for 25 years. And yes, I do <clears throat> own a mirror. <laughs> it was so much fun. Oh my god, so, I'm shaking more now than I was before. Then my vagina is like a sassy South American lady, like no, mama, don't give a man any of your time. He's only gonna ruin your life. <laughs> Can you imagine if a good-looking guy walks into the bar? <laughs> no, mama, no way. <laughs> So far, each student was nailing it. But now, the biggest test of all, Brad's journey had proven to be the most arduous. Conflict with the production, a belly full of beer, and nerves that were peaking was a volatile combination. Was he up for the challenge? He's a psych nurse by day, and he does a lot of work for the community, especially since the court order. Please welcome Brad Hudson! I got dumped. So that just goes to show the transformative powers of spite. <laughs> wow, this was Brad like we'd never seen him before. Honest, open and armed with the knowledge of the last six days, he seemed determined to make the most of this opportunity. Meanwhile, Kara had put her mum on FaceTime in an effort to quell her nerves. We're getting engaged here next week and there's free tickets for you and you and you and you and you. Thank you. I'm proud. So 
I was raised by a very normal couple. They hated each other. The only things they had in common were me and their drug dealer. Pretty brave, as Kara opened up to a room full of strangers about her upbringing. Her mum watched live from her couch at home. She goes, oh, it's just guinea pig food, honey, don't worry about it. And I said, well, why do you smoke it? And when the fuck did we get a guinea pig? <laughs> Meanwhile, Lee Ton was champing at the bit to get a piece of this generous I audience. I just, I just want to get out of there. <laughs> I met a guy, and he's amazing. Casey's wife's watching. <laughs> Thank you guys. Please welcome Lee Tong. That is right. My name is Lee. I know it's a fairly generic Asian name. I'm pretty sure when I was born, it was something like this. Look at me. Look at him. Look at he daddy. He named Lee, okay? So why don't you stitch me up? I need to go to work now. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm really happy with how it went. The rehearsals paid off. Uh, I did kind of fumble the last little bit, but uh, I'm really happy with how it went. I'm, 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 Please welcome our next performer, Kinder Cruz. from a small town down south. Uh, it's a shitty, meth-in-bread fucking place. <laughs> you all might know it as Frankston. <laughs> when you're thinking about not doing something, you get thinking way too much. You but just gotta get in there, husband, you just gotta do um, it. You just have a go and, like a man. you know what we've done this week. And that breeding process started about 50 years ago and it turns out that I'm now related to everyone in Frankston. <laughs> <laughs> do you need me for something? Oh, you want me to do comedy? Okay, cool. Get back to me. <laughs> anyway, as I was talking before this handsome man rudely interrupted. Oozing confidence, flirting with our cameraman, Kim made it look easy. She had the audience eating out of her hand like a pro. Every performer had exceeded expectation and Glynn had saved the best for last. Please welcome Grant Johnson. Grant was widely predicted to be ducks of the class and it certainly seemed true when he started. People don't believe me, I did actually have heart surgery. So you can actually see the scar on the front of the chest here. I would like to dedicate this to actually uh, everyone, all the doctors and nurses at the Alfred Hospital. They were fantastic. But seriously, I never want to fucking see you again. But the longer he went on, the more vulgar his material became and the crowd started to turn. Because if the uh, swipe right's actually start to turn to swipe left, then fucking she's not beautiful anymore, is she? <laughs> oh, that's a, like, geez, that was, I could feel that. I could feel it burning me. It was like... To the 50% of women in the audience, Grant's material was nothing short of offensive. Uh, I'm never going back to see that sex therapist again because I hit, slipped her a 50 for a happy ending. Anyway, enjoy your own happy endings. My name's Grant and I'll tell you that's been tough. The room had become hostile, which demonstrated very clearly what a finely balanced art form stand-up comedy really was, and not to be taken for granted. See what I did there? <laughs> Fortunately, accomplished statesman Greg Fleet was on hand to win the audience back and close the night on a high. Did a little dance. I was just like... The students had graduated from the School of Hard Knock Knocks with flying colours for Talia, Kim, Lee, <laughs> We're all gonna die! Judy, and Steve Davis, this would be the beginning of a career in comedy and we will watch with interest as to where it takes them. Steve Mackey became a state finalist in the nationwide competition Raw Comedy and Stacey added a professional flair to her ever-growing corporate work. For Cara and Brad, it was enough just to say they'd done it, even if they never stood on a comedy stage again. And as for Grant, a man who just 16 weeks earlier was declared clinically dead, 
Perhaps this was nothing more than a chance to really feel alive. Oh, that was just hilarious. Either way, these 10 brave men and women had taken on something very few are willing to do. And regardless of what happens next, their lives will be changed forever.